Hi, I'm Beth Hockberger, CPA, CGMA. This channel aims to educate you on tax, tech, crypto, and finance related news. Come learn how to grow and keep your wealth. Hello. Happy Friday. Welcome everyone to Finance Friday. I'm Beth Hockberger, CPA, CGMA. And today I have a very talented and surprisingly diversely hobbied <laughs> Mark yeah. Turkel from Palm Beach Software Design. Uh, Mark, I don't have a bio in front of me for you. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your sure. your varied <laughs> background? <laughs> sure. Well, I'm not your average computer nerd. Let's start there. Um, I've been a, a pretty free spirit most of my life. I started out surfing at 13 years old. I got into motorcycles. I like doing stuff that's fun and dangerous sometimes. <laughs> um, and because of that lifestyle, I decided I'm never going to work in a place like Office Depot or whatever. So um, I got into programming very young when, when uh, you didn't need a degree or anything. I just kind of really <laughs> got into it, um, which was in the early 80s. So uh, I started out um, doing some programming while I was parking cars for a living and, and going oh, wow. to school for electronics engineering. And uh I hated the homework. I hated the math work and everything. Oh, else. yes, a lot of math. <laughs> it was a lot of math. And that was not my uh, strong suit in, in, you know, regular grade schools and stuff. So I ended up uh, borrowing a computer from a friend, a Commodore 64. And I started learning. I taught myself how to use basic. And next thing I did is I started coding in all the electronic stuff that I needed to understand and learn because it was taking hours to work out these equations on paper. And I always figured there's got to be a better way. So um, in the process of teaching the computer how to do my homework for me, I actually found out that I like programming. It's something that I do well, and uh, I just couldn't get enough of it. So I really fell in love with software at the time and um, never looked back. Um, the next thing I did was I got a job at a uh, company called Data Access Corporation. They create a database for GL software called DataFlex, which has been around for a while since be, since the early 80s. I graduated wow. high school in 82, so I think I started with them in maybe 84, okay? Um, I started out um, it, sweeping the floor and shrink wrapping manuals, but I figured this computer company is two and a half miles away from my house. Oh, wow. So I told my folks, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a semester off. I had one more semester to go. And I was a straight A student, by the way. I finally got my S together and, and started doing well in school. And I told my folks I was going to take a semester off and, and just want to check out the software industry and see if this is what I want to do or not. And, you know, of course, they were not happy about that. And yeah, like, I can't yeah, imagine. More, you know, one more semester to go and I would have had my degree, you know. So long story short, I fell in love with software um, and the owners were at this new company was really cool. They knew I was a surfer and they said, look, if you get done with your work early, leave. I'm like, okay. So of course I started doing programming work to do my work at the office there. And I was leaving at lunchtime every day. And, you know, I had all my work done. So nobody was complaining, but every time somebody came to look for me, where are you? Mark's at the beach. So, <laughs> One day I get called in from the owner of the company. He's like, he's like, you're working part-time. Like, no, I'm not, you know, he's like, yeah, you're surfing every day. I said, well, I'm finishing my work early. Like y'all told me to. <laughs> and, you know, he asked me, how am I getting it done so quick? So I took him into the garage and I showed him they had this backup computer there. And I said, well, in my spare time, I've been learning data flex. And he's like, wow, really? And I said, yeah, he's like, show me what you did. And here I wrote software to manage printing all the labels that went on the disks for the software that they were selling and all the tedious things that I could get a machine to do, I had to do. So um, a week later, he calls me into his office again. He's like, we're giving you a promotion, but you're gonna have to work full time. You know, so I'm like, okay. So they moved me into tech support. And, uh, you know, of course this was a company that sold software that was a software language and a database and everything. So my, tech support was really helping people program, which made me a much stronger programmer. Right, right. Um, and in doing so, I think I was trained to deal with things quickly and, and get a quick understanding and so on. And it, it was just right. I was right there at the right time in the right place. And, and I got really good. Um, so I moved up, I moved into research and development and I spent a few years there and I was helping them actually create the, the products itself. Um, I was also doing a lot of trade show 
stuff with the sales team because mm -hmm. I was one of those nerds that could actually talk to people. Um, so I did a lot of that and I got a good understanding of the sales end and I got a good understanding of the support end and the development end. And, you know, at some point I went to the owner and said, I'd like to own a piece of the company. And he started laughing and he's like, we're not going to do that. And um, so he suggested to me, maybe I, I'd be better off being an independent developer and um, he'd be happy to send us some business. So I'm like, okay. Anyway, that's how I got started. And I started wow. doing contract work. And, you know, of course, I never went back to school because I was making tons of money as a kid. Right, right. Um, so from there, I created Palm Beach Software Design. And that was in 1987. And um, wow. we, uh, we became, we were selling hardware and software at the time. So we we're building a lot of Novell networks and a lot of Microsoft networks and things like that. And then we were also building software to run the companies that, that were buying the hardware. Um, so that worked out fine. And at some point we became Microsoft reps and um, we were, you know, we were published in their book of developers and, and so on and so forth. And, and we really aligned ourselves to the Microsoft camp at some point and moved away from the Dataflex programming, which was becoming a little less popular because Windows had come out at the time. That's um, probably a good call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, it was just rolling with the changes. I was happy to learn any language and I still am. I really enjoy it still. Um, so, you know, I, I picked up a client that wanted to do something with Microsoft office and some automation. And I moved into, you know, doing some of that stuff. Then I found Microsoft access and, Oh, a database. And uh, I learned visual basic and then uh, visual basic started supporting SQL server. And I learned SQL server and, you know, bigger, 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 and more distributed applications and things like that. And um, then cell phones came out, uh, yeah. or, or I'm sorry, smartphones, smartphone, iPhone yeah. came out, Androids and things like that. So of course, yeah, I want to learn about those things. So I got into programming those for a little while and uh, I wrote an application that's in the app store right now called Branded Picks, which is kind of cool. It, it lets you upload your logo to the phone. And then every time you snap a picture, um, like in this picture, you see the Palm Beach software with yeah, Mark yeah. in it. It just every picture you take, it puts your logo on wherever you want. You oh, that's so cool. Size it. So it's a neat little app. And I thought it was going to be the one thing that turns me into a millionaire, but no, I couldn't sell that's it properly. No. <laughs> um, so it's out there and, and, you know, I use it all the time for marketing and it's wonderful because when I go on vacation or whatever, I take pictures. Um, but anyway, we moved into more, uh, you know, working with small businesses, medium sized businesses and, um, We've done, you know, I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but we've done just about everything except written video games. It's the one thing that we don't do, oh. but uh, we've worked in a lot of manufacturing where we would streamline their processes and handle a lot of automation. We've done a lot of front end work, retail, uh, wholesale, B2B, um, done bookkeeping, accounting work. We've done medical industry. So, you know, I've been doing this for 35 years now. So there's really not a whole lot we haven't touched. Uh, but I still love it. And so does my partner, James. And, and uh, you know, we're the senior guys and our teams are, we have wonderful teams located both in South Florida and around the globe. Um, so we have a really nice hybrid model where we do all the design, the database work, the scoping, the specifications, the QA, all that stuff gets done here. And we um, share some of the heavy lifting with our overseas teams which are our employees, not somebody, not contractors, whatever. Um, and we have a really great, uh, we have a really great methodology where we crank out software faster than most companies, um, just because we've got a good system in place. And you need to, right? Like nobody wants to wait anymore for anything. No, no. <laughs> and you know, I mean, you know, with the way people are getting angry with Amazon when your two day shipping takes three days now, yeah. Oh, um, is that the worst? You know what? The reason that pisses people off, <laughs> I'll tell you what pisses me off. It's, it'll say like, oh, arrives tomorrow. Yeah, right? it's never tomorrow. <laughs> it's not tomorrow because they don't ship it. <laughs> right, right. Unless it's in a local warehouse right there. Right there, so yeah. We've been doing a lot of Amazon programming lately for Amazon oh. sellers. So we're learning a lot more about how that works. Oh, that's um, interesting. You know, one of, our, one of our largest clients right now is a... Uh, company that does about 80 or 90 million dollars a year in uh lawn and garden supply and chemicals and things oh, like wow. that for the yard and um we started with him about three years ago and uh he was doing about 35 million and everything that was stopping him from growing was infrastructure so 
Yeah. Uh, we worked closely with him and he showed us there was three different software applications that were separate applications that all of his teams used to handle fulfillment. And, um, you know, the big game with Amazon folks is, is trying to have enough product in the Amazon warehouses so they put you in that buy box, right? And, you know, because they, they want to put the sellers that have the most items at the best price in the special, you can get it here box when you go search, oh, for something, right? Gotcha. Um, so the whole game with Amazon sellers is that they want that buy box. And this client of mine figured things out. And his, what was Lover. holding him back was information and infrastructure. So um, he it brought us to a lot of people, right? Like that's pretty common is, you know, your internal processes yeah hold you back if it's not very streamlined. yeah they you know they were doing a lot of repetitive tasks they were entering in the same data in in multiple applications and you know the guy was making money hands over you know, hand over fist but he knew he could do better and as soon as james and i came in and took a look we're like yeah there's a there's several different areas here that we can really optimize and uh, we've been doing that so he was using three different software packages and <laughs> excuse me and he went through all three of them with us and showed us what was important to him and um, how he used it and you know he walked us around the facility and he showed us how things are in use I mean this guy he never did this before but he knew exactly what to do with us wow. <laughs> so he gave us a really great start and what we did is um, you know we, we came up with a game plan and and you know we gave him a proposal for about six months worth of work or so and um what we decided to do is combine the best features of these three applications together into a brand new application that he could own and use and do everything. So um, part of the process was us learning how to deal with Amazon. Gotcha. And gotcha. Um, that was that was a nice learning curve because they really don't have step one, step two, step three kind of stuff. It's ringing on my computer. I don't know if you no hear problem. it. I hear it now. <laughs> Ah, yay, go. live streams. <laughs> yep. Like, what is that? <laughs> anyway, anyway so, so, so yeah, so you you had to learn Amazon to help him. We had to, system. yeah, we had to learn what's called the MWS API, which is what the sellers use for oh, okay. uh, programmers use to support sellers in gotcha, gotcha. checking inventory, updating things. And um, it was a different methodology for, for computing because everything Amazon does is on such a huge volume of millions and millions of transactions yeah, yeah. from all over the world at a time that everything goes into a queue and then you have to wait for it to perform its operations and then it lets you know. So it's a little bit different type of programming than saying write this record to the database because it doesn't automatically write. So um, we, took a, we, we took some time to learn how that works and I, I think we're experts now. That's very um, cool. We, we really have it down. So we really enjoy the work is really interesting. It, it's just interesting watching the process of how Amazon wants to charge the sellers for the storage and how the buy box works. And it's it, you know, this guy that owns the company, it's like he's playing the stock market. He's always looking at his inventory levels and he's got yeah. thousands of products. So it's it's a job, but he's yeah, always yeah. looking at inventory levels and then his shipping department is watching the same thing to know when to ship just enough yep. um, because Amazon yep. makes most of their money on storage, which people don't realize. Oh. So you start selling. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Well, they make money on everything, but, yeah. <laughs> but there's, there's storage fees that, that right. they make good money on from the sellers. So that's the big game they play. And we've kind of, gotcha. uh, we, we kind of got a handle on how that works. So um, yeah, we'd like to do more Amazon work for anybody out there that's an Amazon <laughs> seller. Yeah, that's um, and it's such an interesting field because, you know, we, when I, I thought Amazon's whole model was they see what people buy, right? And they're like, oh, you people like these widgets? Great. You know what? We're going to make our own widgets and we're going to sell them and we're going to undercut you because we know what everybody's price is. Right. <laughs> Which and is I don't probably think, some I don't, part of their business. I don't somewhere. think so. I, you know, that that's opening up a whole different thing of manufacturing for them that I don't think they're, I, you know, my son works there and I've never heard oh. anything about them wanting to do that. Um, they have a ton of infrastructure that they need to deal with. And, you know, obviously um, 
the powers yeah. that be at Amazon are venturing off in every different direction because they need to spend their money. So who knows what's going to happen in the future. But right now, I think what Amazon does is they optimize the best sellers that they have and, and, and they promote them. So that's what I know. And, and like everything else, it's gotten spammed out because how often do you look for something and you find everything except what, <laughs> what you're course. looking for? <laughs> of course. But of course, if you say you're looking for a, a coffee cup in front of Alexa, that's all you see on Facebook. And right, right. Else uh, you know, now so. you know what's going to happen. <laughs> yep. You're going to be yep. seeing coffee cups everywhere. <laughs> I know. I said the A word. So now Alexa probably heard me in the other room. And, you know, it's, it's, you have it's the other fun. one. And sometimes it's like creepy. You, it's very creepy because sometimes you don't even say the name. You say something that sounds ish like it. Yeah. And she's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, Yeah, my Whoa. Samsung, my <laughs> Samsung phone seems to just start listening whenever it wants now. So, you know, I don't have to say okay G, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a crazy world. Um, talk to me about the marketing automation because you have that very bright logo there. And and I love marketing automation. And we've we've chatted a bit before about, yeah. about that. It's been really idea. good. Um, we we I decided in the beginning of COVID as we as we trim things down and we we shut the office down. I decided that there's things that we were paying humans to do that we think computers can do. And um, I love that. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm being straight honest, and it's not like we wanted to replace humans. There was just better things we could have them do. Right. So. Um, automation has always been the name of, of what we do here and i'm like why are we doing everything manual we're like the shoemaker with our kids running around with holes in the shoes you know yeah we make beautiful shoes for everybody else so we started talking um amongst ourselves about the different software packages that we've developed over the years you know crms and mail software and you know other things and um we we're we're starting to talk about bringing them all together into a package that we can call our own and everything and I, I hit the brakes because, you know, obviously we were working at home during COVID and, and I had a lot more time to sit around and surf the web and, and look at other things. And I started looking at HubSpot and I started looking at some of their competitors and I found SharpSpring. I'm not sure how I jumped, how I found them, but um, I went through a demo with them and I liked everything that they did. And, and it did mostly what HubSpot did, but they had a much better uh, financial model, especially if I wanted to become a reseller of this, which as soon as I started looking at this, I'm like, customers are asking me for this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. And we always say no, right? I want to be a programming house. Well, this is a kind of programming tip. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, I'm not the average nerd. I really do like social media and I understand how it works. And, um, you know, I said, you know what, I can do this and I can take this job on myself because I really enjoy it. And sometimes you have to do it yourself if you want it done right. So I, I purchased SharpSpring as a customer at first and I got it set up and I said, you know, you can set up workflows so that when yeah. different events occur, it'll perform whatever acts of craziness you want it to do. And um, acts of craziness. <laughs> I like the way, I like the way it ties in forms. And, and basically once you come to my website, you pick up a cookie. So I know if you came back and uh, you know, it pops up on the screen. Tracking you all you know, over. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is not, this is not any secret of any company because everybody's starting right. to do this now. Everybody. But, yeah. <laughs> um, as I, as I jumped on a couple of years back, it was, it was a kind of newer thing. So of course I was fascinated with it and I'm like, I need to learn more. And um, a little bit of my, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, but once I dive in, I dive in, you know, <laughs> All in there. so, so alongside of using SharpSpring, I was using that to send off automated emails and send people to forms and, you know, the whole sales process, get them to the site, have them fill out a form so we can contact them and give them what they want. Works really wonderfully. And, and there's, you know, SharpSpring's not the only package out there that does that. It's just the one that I latched onto because I like the reseller plans and things like that. Um, of course, we started asking it to do things that it couldn't do. So, <laughs> so now we're like, okay, you know, one of the things, you know, I run a networking group and one of the things that we did that was a real pain in the butt is we got everybody to fill in a form, an attendance form, just say, you know, my name, my phone number, my email address, I was here, right? 
And what we would do was gather that all together at the end of the meeting and broadcast it out to everybody who came to the meeting because most people were distracted looking at the chat information to see people's names and emails. So as soon as I realized that, I'm like, we can automate this, right? Well, we really couldn't. Oh, no. <laughs> SharpSpring didn't support that right out of the box. So oh. you, couldn't, um, you couldn't do certain things with lists that I kind of thought was silly. And, you know, why can't I broadcast message to this list and things like that? So, okay, um, there's an API. Let's find out what the API oh. is. So we look at the API. And, of course, the API lets us get in programmatically behind the scenes. And once we can touch the database, we can do everything. So we built in this automation and we learned how to use the SharpSpring API. And we've been doing a little bit of custom work for SharpSpring users, um, you know, similar to what we did with the networking thing so that everybody can quickly jump on, fill out a form. And uh, you've, gotten the, you've gotten the email. Yep, yep. Uh, so, so that was a big time saver. And, and, you know, I'm into the automation stuff. So, so that's really what we like to do. And um, since we did that, I decided, you know what, we might as well sell this to other people. And, and uh, so we don't do the marketing work, but what we'll do is we'll help you get SharpSpring set up. We'll work with your marketing department. And that's honestly, that. that's a big challenge getting this stuff set up. I mean, I, I'm on Zoho. Yeah. I, I don't even know how to, like, I know how to do three things. On there. I'm like, team, well, y'all handle it. I don't know. <laughs> well, your system's awesome. I mean, I, I love your system from the day that, you know, and I don't know if, people know but i'm a i'm a client of bets and from day one it's it was fully automated i was like wow you even get a video with bet and oh <laughs> you know i thought i thought you were really on top of it and, and that was one we of you know, james and i both took a look at that and we're like yes yeah, she's our girl yeah you know, we try so, i mean there's still stuff where i'm like why do i have to manually do this like how do we automate it and it, you know you get there eventually but you have to like yeah. figure out the process before you can automate it because yeah. you automate and, it before you figured it out <laughs> nothing good and a lot of people make that mistake and, and try yes. that end up very frustrated so yes yeah um once you once you understand Guilty. everything you can and can't do then it's time to call someone like us and say look it doesn't do this but here's what i want to do and that's and that's when a company like ours will jump in and do that type of custom work right and i, and I don't think people necessarily realize unless you've gone through it like i i agree with you i will take a piece of software over a human any day and I had created this like Frankenstein accounting system because like accounting products are super niche, super specialized. And they'll be like, oh, we integrate with XYZ, QuickBooks, this, that, and the other thing. And we found out it was a year or two ago, we started integrating everything. I was like, oh, this made a huge mess. Because <laughs> even when they say they integrate, it's like, well, it doesn't always do what you think it should do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, especially, you know, we do a lot of back end work with QuickBooks and integration with the, you know, any e com applications or, or B2B or whatever. And QuickBooks doesn't expose a double entry system to you. So it gets uh -huh. a little, it gets a little freaky behind the scenes until you really understand what it's doing, which is why that we call like you with questions. <laughs> But that sounds like QuickBooks, a little freaky behind the scenes. Yeah, it, you know, <laughs> it is. The, on the screen is also a little freaky with QuickBooks, but <laughs> it is, it is. So, um, you know, there, there's challenges with all the software, but, um, you know, we, sure. we like a hard challenge. That's what we do, you know. That's awesome. So you did bring up the networking group, and I was going to ask you if you wanted to plug it. Do you want to, to plug it? Because I've met some great people in your group. I have too, but I think, in all honesty, I think we're winding it down. It, oh, it's, no. um it was, yeah. it was really great. You know, we started about a year before COVID and um, it was a really great group. It still is a really great group, but it's a lot of wear and tear on us. And yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to keep those things going. It's yeah, hard. And, sure. and, you know, I think everybody got a lot of um, Zoom fatigue from, from COVID times and um, everybody started, uh, you know, meeting and moving on and going to different groups. And, you know, there, we have 1500 registered people in our group. Wow. Maybe 25 or 30 show up when we have a elite lunch, but you know, I could tell participation starting to drop off. And personally, um, our business is, is moving in a little bit of a different direction as well. And it's just becoming to the point that I don't have time for a free group anymore at this point. So um, we decided, we told everybody we're taking the summer off and we still haven't made a final decision. Um, but I think I'm going to try to find somebody to pass the group on to. Um, nice. you know, yeah. it's a free group. So, so we're looking for a good host or whatever. And, 
Uh, maybe it'll move on in that way, or maybe it'll just, you know, go away for a while. We'll see. Um, but I made wonderful connections. I know. Yeah, I made was. some fantastic connections and, um, and I often couldn't make it. And, but the few times that I did, I was like, oh, there's some amazing people. So. And we always had a lot of fun. So yes, you know, our, fun. <laughs> our, there was a lot of smiles and laughs and, and it was great. So, um, you know, mixed feelings. And, and we still, like I said, we still haven't made a hundred percent decision yet, but, um, you know, depending on, on, on what we do, we're starting to sell some more of our, um, packages, our software packages. Now we want to concentrate a little bit more on that. So, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I can't make it. See what happens. Well, I hope it doesn't, I hope it doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm totally thinking go maybe away. We'll, you know, maybe we'll go to once a month and just do the uh, big event where we have a speaker come in and teach us something. And, you know, so the group is called Palm Beach Elite Networking, but right now for summer, we are shut down. Yeah. I, I'll that's, leave it at that. That's pretty normal. Like, cause we, I don't know where everybody is that ends up watching this because we have clients all over the country, even in other countries. Uh, South Florida in the summer is really hot <laughs> and a lot of people leave. Although it doesn't feel like it right now, if you drive around, no. the traffic's still crazy, but a lot of stuff shuts down in the summer. That's fairly normal. Other groups yeah. that I'm in are like, yeah, we'll see you like after the summer. So yeah. And it's like, we, we tell our Northern clients, you know, this is the time that, that we act like winter time. We stay in most of the day and, you know, and when winter comes, that's when we plant our flowers, you know? Yeah, exactly. We, so, we are really opposite. And it's, it's, yeah. it's funny you say plant your flowers because that's a hard thing for people who garden when they come here they're like, don't understand. It's like, no, no, no. Summer, the only thing you can grow is like weeds. <laughs> yeah. <about> it. <laughs> you know, it, I just came back from a trip to Pennsylvania and, you know, obviously everything is blooming and blossoming. Yeah, there. It's yeah, gorgeous yeah. everywhere you look. And we're like, we have those, they died. We have those, they die, you know? <laughs> They you can't translate that stuff here. It doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> right. We have tried. Right. Trust me. Now, now we have succulents and things that like the heat. And, you know, in wintertime, we'll do it again. Yeah. You need our, our tropical or subtropical, whatever we are. And I'm further yeah. south than you even. So ours might be even worse. But yeah, we're moving. Yeah. We, yeah. In Palm Beach, we're kind of getting subtropical. Not as many coconut trees and things like that. But, <laughs> yeah. but it's still a rough climate. Like it, it, it's not that temperate mid Atlantic. And I no. go up, I go up to New Jersey in the summer to go see my family. And it's like, oh, I miss these, you know, these particular types of greenery and flowers yeah. and whatever is, stuff don't grow here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Or some version of it might, but it's, it's not the same. It's definitely, yeah. it's, it's different. All right, Mark. So I don't want to keep you here all day. Um, I do have one thing that I usually ask people, but I feel like this is going to be boring for you. I usually ask if you've got any interesting or unusual hobbies or something unusual about yourself you want to share, but all of your hobbies are interesting. So maybe do you have a boring hobby? <laughs> um, do I have a boring hobby? <laughs> Probably not. Now, most, you know, most of it is, um, you know, I, I've been a surfer my whole life and that's kind of winding down now as I'm getting a little bit older. So I don't surf as much. We got the motorcycles. But I have motorcycles. I've been doing, I've been riding motorcycles for close to 20 years now. Um, my wife and I go touring all over the place and, so cool. uh, and we love it. We love it. So uh, I wrote a book called Ride Captains and Tail Gunners for anybody that's interested in learning about group rides. And I'm going to send you one. Um, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> but, uh, you know, with, with the book that I wrote, it's starting to get some traction and I'm, and I'm going to start doing a, a monthly webinar on you know, on the content of the book. And that's going to be a, Oh, a, that's cool. Um, so I'm excited about that. That's going to start up next month. And we also have some software that we created to help groups manage each rider's miles. It's called group miles and it can be found at mymotorcycleroutes.com. So I'm kind of, that's, that's kind of my new hobby right now is getting this off the ground because I really think that, that as I retire and sell the company in another 10 years or whenever I sell it, I don't want to stop because that's how you get old. So um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of setting up so that I can at least do this lecturing and 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 uh, you know be be active with safety and motorcycles and things like that for that's a long so cool. time. And, um, currently talking with a couple of uh, large vendors um, for motorcycle communications and um, a couple of different uh, manufacturers and things like that because wow. um, there's no book on the market like the book that I wrote, which is about group riding. So the big joke is, is that if I send it to awesome. New York times, I'll definitely be on the bestseller list because there's no other category. 
So uh, the I think I didn't do that just to see if that happens, but um, <laughs> might but as yeah, well. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, I you know I I I like to have fun, and the reason that I own my own business is because it's been fun for thirty five years. I'm sure it's been the same for you. Um, you know, uh, of course, as a small business owner, season. there's. But, you know, there's always hills and valleys and there's always yeah. times where you're miserable. And, you know, there's times that I say, I, I wish I was flipping burgers at, at Wendy's this week. My, um, my thing is dog walker when I'm, when I'm unhappy with doing taxes and stuff. And like right. April 13th, I'm like, I want to walk dogs. And yeah. so somebody told me, another accountant told me they had a client that had a dog walking business. And it's horrible because you can never go on vacation ever. Wow. Because all these people rely on you. So now you have yeah. to find somebody to take over. I was like, oh, now I'm stressed out. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I mean, even for a motorcycle trip a couple of weeks ago, we had to postpone for a week because our dog sitter couldn't come stay at our house for, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when that happens, it's like camp for the animals here. I got two cats and a dog and uh, <laughs> our, our pet sitter comes with a big bulldog. That's a sweetheart that loves everybody. And, oh. you know, I, I see the, the whole time I'm stressing out about leaving. I'm like, my poor dog's going to be sad. It's like they, they went to camp. They didn't even miss it. So, <laughs> That That's great. awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much. We're going to stick your contact info uh, on the post and share it out. So if anybody needs help with their automation or their motorcycling, you never know. <laughs> Sometimes we, people ask we, me for weird things, so I know who to send them right. to. <laughs> yeah, my you know, for, the, for Palm Beach Software, we love working one-on-one -on -one with our clients. We build software from the ground up or we'll take over a failed project that you might have tried to do overseas that didn't work well or oh, i'm sure that whatever. happens a lot <laughs> that does happen a lot and we also you know we also just real quick we also do some consulting for companies that are outsourcing if you need somebody to look over your shoulder and make sure you're not getting taken or, or oh doing that's what they great say they're doing um we yeah because it's hard to manage projects where you don't know what's going on <laughs> it is it's tough and, and you know i i would i would be i hate to say it but 50 percent of the business that we have started out overseas and it failed because they didn't understand how to manage the project. Um, yeah, so, I believe so we're, that. We're good at those kinds sure. of things. And, you know, I like that fun, but I'm serious about business as well. So, um, you know, thank you very much for having me. And, and oh, thank for, you for coming for on. Anybody watching, Bev is awesome, man. Do business with <laughs> Bev for your accounting work. She's great. I appreciate that plug. And, uh, that's it. We'll be back. I think next week. I think we have somebody. I don't even remember. Oh no, next week I'm away. I'm camping. I'm not here next week. So we'll take a week off. Nice. Uh, and then we'll be back. But thank you, Mark. Enjoy your Thanks weekend. Thanks so Thank you for sticking around. I hope you learned something new. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue improving your tax and financial literacy. Bye.